The financial market is facing rough weeks in a worldwide proportion. The dollar is operating high, and the stock markets are falling, and even temporarily suspending trading in some countries. This is happening due to a price war in the international oil market led by Russia and Saudi Arabia, causing a sudden drop in oil prices. To understand how the price of oil is defined, we have to remember that it is a raw material whose price is defined by the international market in dollars, and it depends mainly on the production and consumption of oil around the world. Despite hitting its critical point last month, oil prices have been falling since the beginning of the year, mostly because of the current health crisis made many people reclusive at their homes, reducing fuel consumption, consequently filling up reserves to their heads, and the oil demand for production of fuel has crashed. Under the law of supply and demand, the barrel of oil has lost its value. Earlier this year, a barrel of Brent oil, that's a benchmark for international prices, was worth about $66. Mid-February, it dropped to $53. Aware of the recent devaluation of oil, OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, has started to consider cuts in oil production. The idea was that with less oil on the market, the price would go back up again. Negotiations seemed to advance at first, but they didn't end up well. Russia, which isn't a country of OPEC, refused to support the cuts, and the organization responded by raising the bar for its own production limits. After the agreement attempts fiasco, Saudi Arabia, the leader of OPEC and the largest oil exporter in the world, decided then to lower the prices of raw materials and increase its production in April. As a result, the OPEC summit managed to determine the marginal price of oil no longer by supply or by cuts, but rather by demand or by a lack in oil production. With that said, it's noticeable that the country is trying to take advantage of this price crisis to gain its market share. The outcome of this trade dispute between the Saudis and the Russians caused oil prices to plummet since last week, with prices dropping by 30%, the biggest downturn since the Gulf War in 1991. As Bloomberg had affirmed, with negative oil prices, ships dawdling at sea with unwanted cargoes, and traders getting creative about where to stash oil, the next chapter in the oil crisis is now inevitable. Great swathes of the petroleum industry are about to start shutting down. Later, Bloomberg's Javier Blas stated that the demand was first destroyed as lockdowns had shut down factories and kept drivers at home. Then, when the storage started to get crowded with barrels, Traders decided to use ocean-going tankers to store crude, expecting for better prices in the future. But now, shipping prices are escalating at an absurd pace as the industry simply runs out of tankers. To summarize, the entire oil production industry is shutting down, not by option, but by the lack of option. According to Goldman, it's expected for the next three weeks a collapse in oil storage, as he says that there will be literally no place left on Earth to store oil. And unless oil producers want to pay buyers to hold the oil, as it's happened on historic April 20th, leaving no other choice but to shut in output. Head of commodity trading giant Gunver Group, Torbjörn Tarnquist, had expressly said, we are moving into the end game. Early to mid-May could be the peak. We are weeks, not months, away from it. Even though there was a catastrophic price plunge a week ago when West Texas Intermediate fell to $40 a barrel, the U.S. shale patch is still leading. To catch a glimpse of how the shale industry is reacting, we have to observe the sudden collapse in the number of oil rigs in operation. Before the present-day outburst had started, oil companies ran about 650 rigs in the United States. Since then, more than 40% of them have stopped working, with only 378 left, setting a four-year low last week. Meanwhile, between the delay on total U.S. oil production and the rig count, a perfect scenario has been put together for the U.S. production to collapse next. 
The co-head of oil trading at commodity merchant Trafigura already advised that this was the smack in the face the market needed to realize this is serious, meaning that the output in Texas, New Mexico, North Dakota, and other states will now tumble much faster than it was thought as companies have already started to react to the negative prices. Last Monday after the price collapse, there was a common sense that the output would drop by about 1.5 million barrels a day by December. But now, market watchers see that loss by late June, as the analyst at consultant IHS Market Limited, Roger Dywin, stated that the severity of the price pressure is likely to act as a catalyst for the immediate turndown in activity and shut-ins. All facts considered, it looks like the United States industry is being switched off. As ConocoPhillips and shale producer Continental Resources have all announced plans to shut in output. In Oklahoma and New Mexico, regulators had voted to allow oil drillers to close wells without losing leases. Even North Dakota, the U.S. representation in the shale revolution, is facing tightenings in production. So far, oil producers have already closed more than 6,000 wells curtailing about 405,000 barrels a day in production, or about 30% of the state's total, as maintained by Bloomberg data. And the output cuts aren't exclusive for the US. Chad, Vietnam, Brazil, they're reducing output or preparing to do so. The head of North Sea oil company Serica Energy, Mitch Flegg, confirmed that, yes, clearly there must be a risk of shut-ins. In certain parts of the world, it is a real and present risk. Small and large oil companies had been discussing a new perspective in emergency board meetings, setting the goal for small firms to do what they have to do to stay afloat, as bigger ones are still struggling in a lighter proportion. Over the course of the next few weeks, Big Oil will offer an insight into the crisis when companies report their earnings, and it's predicted that by May 1st, the rest of the OPEC, alongside Saudi Arabia and Russia, to join the output cuts, reducing their production by 23%, and that's approximately 9.7 million barrels a day. State-owned company Saudi Aramco has already announced a cut in their production. And Russian oil companies have announced exports of crude Urals would drop in May to a 10-year low. But even so, this constant warning doesn't seem enough, as every week another 50 million barrels of crude are being stored. This is more than the necessary amount to fuel Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and the UK combined, and it will create a shortage in land-based storage worldwide until early June max. This is only the beginning, as this enormous shutdown is going to spread throughout oil refining soon worldwide. Marathon Petroleum, a huge U.S. refinery, declared last week that they were going to stop production at a plant near San Francisco. Royal Dutch Shell has deactivated several units in three U.S. refineries in Alabama and Louisiana. In Europe and Asia, many refineries are already operating at half speed. On April 17, U.S. oil refiners processed 12.4 million barrels a day, the lowest amount in 30 years as the oil and gas industry cropped out 51,000 drilling and refining jobs in March, a 9% reduction, adding 15,000 more job losses to this picture when ancillary jobs such as construction, manufacturing of drilling equipment, and shipping are included. It's said to be a five to seven years of job growth wiped out in a single month. The oil crisis created yet another factor of uncertainty among investors who were already discouraged by the global outbreak. The downturn in oil prices shrinks the revenue of countries that produce this raw material to receive royalties proportional to their production value. If prices remain low for a long time, big oil companies' profits will suffer. This keeps investors away from the most risky assets, especially stocks. With the widespread sale of shares, exchanges lose value. Investors still prefer safer options such as U.S. Treasury bonds, gold, and the dollar, at least for now. Despite the search for other options, oil remains one of the main drivers of global economic activity. When global economic activity collapses, 
it's only natural that the huge oil production chain also collapses. In a recent update of its projections, the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, started to forecast a 1.5% drop in GDP in 2020 and a 15% contraction on direct investments around the world. This current and exaggerated swing of oil prices is above all else a sure indicator of the critical situation of the economy in all corners of the planet.